Good morning, saints of God. We thank God for granting us life on a new day today. We thank Him for how far He's brought us. We are we'll be continuing with our overall theme of I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And today we'll be looking at the relationship between holiness and the anointing. So shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we are so grateful to you for blessing us with a new day. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who is our seal and who gives us the grace to run the race and finish well. We pray that as we come to listen at your feet for a word in season, that you will speak to us, you give us grace, and you show us, O oh God, how, Father, to walk before that you will anoint us a fresh oil to do the work you've called us to do and to finish as servants who hear the good words of good and faithful servants. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we're looking at the title of the relationship between holiness and the anointing. The relationship between holiness and the anointing. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, that for our God is a consuming fire. So what has holiness got to do with the anointing? Or how does holiness make you more likely to receive the anointing? Or please, so may God please with you that he gives you of his anointing. So Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21, that in a large house, there are articles, not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some are for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy and useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. Now, if we think about it, Bible says, um, the heading says, I shall anointed with fresh oil. Now, in the old days, if you had to light a fire, you had to use oil. Now, if you think about it, Jesus Christ says in Matthew 15, that nobody lights a candle and hides under a bushel. In Zechariah chapter 4, Bible speaks of two olive trees that are joined by two pipes and two lampstands or two lamps that are burning. So if you, to make fire from oil um if you use clean oil it burns clean it burns with no smoke but impure oils burn with a lot of smoke now bible says in romans chapter 12 that we should offer ourselves as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to god a sacrifice at the right temperature at the right heat actually has or if you put any if you roast meat or fish or any such uh, um, a food item on fire at the right temperature it gives a very nice smell at the wrong temperature, it actually begins to burn and char and it has a very bad smell. Without holiness, Bible says no one shall see God. That's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Now, being anointed by God is God giving you of his oil of the Holy Spirit, and he is a fire, and lighting you up as a fire, as a candle that can burn to point others to Christ. If you are a vessel, as Second Timothy says, which is impure. If we were to put this oil in you and light you up with this fire, you will create such a foul smell that even he could not stand you. So, if you look at the, the, uh, um, the cl- so it all starts by, if you look at how to be anointed, it all starts by anointing is only for born again believers. Why so? Because before that point, you are full of sin. You can't please God. And at the point of being born again, the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you from all sin and has made you whole again. He's given you a seed of his Holy Spirit so that you, are, you have the power to work in righteousness. Then when he gives you of his oil and anointing, you will not defile the oil with sin or the flame that of, of a fire which he places in you to burn and show his glory will not cause a stink. So holiness, if we... Hold, what does it mean to be holy? Holy means to be set apart for God. You know, if you look at how God is described in the book of Ezekiel, God is high above all things. He is set apart. So it means holy means to be set apart for God's use only, which means that if you are for God, you can't do, you can't say I'm serving God, kakra, and then doing what things kakra. It, it doesn't work. You have to be all for God or not for God. So Jesus Christ says that in, in, in Revelation 3 that, because you are neither hot nor cold, but look whom I will spew you out. So hot means that you are on fire for God. But being on fire for God means that you, if, if, if you are burning with a fire and you are burning with clean oil, you, are, you, you have what you call a sweet smelling aroma. So to receive this fresh oil, fresh oil is clean oil that has no impurities. 
you yourself must be a vessel of honor, a vessel which is clean. So first, and uh, you first cleanse yourself. First, you examine yourself. Lord, what am I doing that has made me impure before you? Search me and know my heart. Show me any wicked way in me. And when God shows you this wicked way, it is absolutely, then you go before him and say, Lord, cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ. Make me whole again. After you have become whole, then, then, Bible, then, then, then Hebrews 1 applies to you. He says that thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. So what do you love? Do you love the things of God and do you love to also please the world? Do you love serving God and do you love serving men? Do you fear men or you fear God? Are, are you like Saul who, when he was told to wait for Samuel, said that because Samuel has delayed and because my people are running away from me, let me fo- push myself to sacrifice when I am not cut out to be a, a, a priest or a Levite. Or you'll be like David who will wait on God in spite of all the troubles that happened to him. David had had, had his, 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 his family captured, but still said, what should I do, God? So to receive this fresh oil, so that you burn with a fire that is that creates a sweet smelling aroma, you must love righteousness and hate iniquity. What is righteousness? That is to follow Jesus Christ in totality, because he is the righteousness. He, he is the righteousness of God. So to receive this fresh oil, it's a few things. Number one, you must cleanse the vessel. How how you know that the vessel is clean or dirty? Now, the first thing, the Bible says that we should, we should be cleansed by the washing of the water of the word. The word of God must be a daily portion of who you are, showing you, revealing to you your heart and showing you where you are. Two, when you find out that you are, when the word of God shows you where you have gone wrong, then you must come before God. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. So you must be humble, come to God and say, Lord, this is my sin. Wash me from my sin. After he makes you clean, he himself, because he has given you a commission and ministry or some work to do, will give you the oil of anointing to help you to go. Because without that oil, you cannot run the race. Then after you have received the oil, because you love righteousness and hate iniquity, you will keep yourself from the things that will corrupt you. So that when his fire comes upon you to keep you burning, you will not smoke and, 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 and defile as but you will be a sweet smelling savor to him. So to conclude, first thing is the fact that one, you must be a vessel of honor means that you must start, start by, it starts by you being born again, you being washed by, by, by the blood of the, of the Lamb, you being in the Word which shows you how to sanctify yourself before God. Because you see, even after you receive anointing, you can end up like Saul. Saul was humble, Saul was meek, Saul was small in his eyes, and God picked him to be king of Israel. But later on, he became proud because he felt that he was king and began to go ahead of God and do things he shouldn't do. You can easily do that if you have... If you see the anointing. Anointing gives you the grace to do things you cannot do in your own power. Something could could, 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 could tear apart lions. Something could fight a whole army with a, 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 the, the, the jawbone of a donkey. David could fight Goliath. You know, the anointing makes you do things that you cannot do in your own power. But without the, the grace of God, you become proud like so and then begin to stink and, be, and, and begin to defile the very oil and therefore you begin to, to, to smoke and sting God's nostrils. So first, you must be born again. Second, you must walk in the, the, the knowledge of, of, of the word of God and be sanctified daily. Third is the fact that you must be a vessel of honor and a vessel that is empty of yourself. Empty yourself of all pride, of yourself, of anything that is you. And only say, say, God, I am empty. I am, I, I, I'm waiting for you to fill me and use me as you will. So if you, so with these things, once you start by being born again, once you are led by God in sanctification, once you are empty of your sense of self, then the fresh oil can fill you. And when God lights you up with the fire of his holiness, you will not stink as much and you'll be able to walk complete and finish the task at hand. So our prayer today is, Lord, examine me. Lord, wash me. Lord, cleanse me of anything that is iniquity and sin. Lord, make me whole before you. Lord, empty me of self. And Lord, give me the grace to maintain the clean oil you give me that you you will keep filling me and and I'll never run dry. With this prayer in mind, go before God today and say, Father, I can't do this work without your anointing of the Holy Spirit. But Lord, you are holy and I cannot come before you defiled. Otherwise, you will consume me. So Lord, cleanse me. Lord, make me whole. Lord, anoint me a fresh oil. Lord, give me the grace to start and run and finish well. Lord, help me in this walk 
that I will not fail of the ministry and the calling given me. Father, give me the heart of David. Father, give me the heart of Job. Father, give me the heart of Abraham that by faith I will walk with you no matter what it is that comes against me. That I will trust that the words you spoke to me in your, in your Bible, the words you said that you will never leave me or forsake me are true. I will not compromise my faith or my stance on you for anything. I will not sell out the reward you have for me for a, 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 a portion of food for, for, for instant gratification. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.